I will take us and introduce our next speaker, who is Laura Baldwin, who was a science scholar at um, college and university and went on to become an Olympic sailor and coach. Um, she now takes on a much more difficult role of being the mother of a seven year old um, and is being volunteering for XR, leading local community projects such as tree planting, eco fairs, people's assembly. Uh, and going around and talking to different um, groups, for example, schools. She's currently engaged in the Ocean Rebellion, which is a legal case against the shipping industry, um, works for Champions for, uh, for Earth, the World Olympians, and is co-founder of Greens Can, which is what she will be speaking to us this evening about. Um, and as well as all of that is taking on the most challenging role, which I'm sure a lot of you are as well, which is homeschooling um, and trying to keep a child entertained during lockdown. So, uh, Laura, welcome. Hopefully you can uh, unmute yourself and thank you for um, joining us this evening. Your 10 minutes starts now. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity this evening to input into what could potentially have a pivotal impact at this absolutely critical time in the history of humanity. You know, the, the future is kind of hinging somewhat on the outcomes of this COP26. Today is the 10th of February, 2021. We're currently at 415 parts per million of carbon, atmospheric carbon dioxide on a planet that is 1.2 degrees heading for three to five degrees by the end of this century. You know, the scientists and the scholars, they warn that that will likely lead to societal collapse and the extinction of a million species. You know, these um, dates for carbon neutrality are giving us a false sense of time. You know, it's not 2050, it's not 2030, it's this year and next. It's how we come out of the COVID crisis that is going to shape the next decade, century and beyond. You know, the Green Party are the trusted party when it comes to the environment, and we really need to play on that superpower this year. You know, continuing the same old campaigning is almost guaranteed to fail. You know, we need to do something different. We need fundamental change and it needs to happen fast. Like, we need an unprecedented uprising. We need to push for much stronger, much faster, genuinely green solutions from this government now. The Green Party's time is now, it is, it's this year. Everything that they've been working on for years, everything needs to climax in this year to really push ourselves forward and get heard and noticed. Um, so how does the Green Party use its platform to propel the people of this country to take action? And how does it influence the rest of the world without yet holding the key to number 10? So Extinction Rebellion has been the most influential and powerful movement in sounding the alarm on the climate and ecological emergency. They've had huge success in that, shifted the Overton window tremendously, and will continue to have a really important role to play. But our feeling is that the climate and ecological emergency needs new respected voices to stand up and be heard and to take on the, the dialogue and to sell the solutions. So Extinction Rebellion's success was based on the fact they engaged in nonviolent direct action, NVDA. They caused a disturbance, it, it created attraction, and they got invited to engage in dialogue with the media, the government, um, and corporates and councils. The Green Party, interestingly, has as its philosophical basis that explicitly says that it should not only rely on the ballot box, that where necessary, the Green Party should engage in nonviolent direct action. Breaking the rules for a good cause has long been a noble tradition. You know, NVDA has been successful many times in the past and notably the success of Gandhi with the Indian rebellion against the British rule. Then we had Rosa Parks who sparked the civil rights movement. Martin Luther King who forced changes to racially discriminating laws and the suffragettes who got the women the vote. So this year there's um, Burning Pink out there that are aiming to fill the prisons 
we've got XR, you need to flood the um, jails and the courtrooms. And then we could have Greens can, you know, really sort of showing the solutions, getting the mass participation, perhaps through not advocating for arrest for the main part to be more inclusive, but then have our lead leaders step forward and sacrifice themselves where necessary to, to strengthen the cause. Um, if anyone wants to get involved with Greens Can and shape it it's really as beginning, please do, um, to show what that this could look like. So Greens Can was born in the mind of Professor Rupert Reed, who proposes that the Green Party engage in radical truth telling, saying honestly that the aim of the Green Party to stave off the climate and ecological catastrophe through the electoral route has failed. The politics in general has failed to protect us. All international climate conferences to date have failed and that the COP26, our last best chance, is also likely to fail. No, sorry, Rupert would say is going to fail. Um, and in saying this, it will attract media attention and it'll open the dialogue for us to be able to, to push our solutions and to emphasize the importance of decarbonizing at speed. Um, we need a, a war style mobilization to overcome this and we need to use such strong language to, to get attention. Um, being authentic and honest will gain public respect. And paradoxically, Rupert continues that one way we might unleash the Green Party with a new power at the ballot box is by saying that the ballot box is no longer enough. If we back up such new realism with new deepened willingness to engage in intelligent, well thought through targeted NVDA that makes sense, then the message will have extra credibility. We'll be showing by our deeds that we mean what we say and that this could be really powerful. So um, co-founder, councillor Alison Teal um, is a great example of how MVDA can be successful at a local level. Her willingness to get arrested and being threatened with imprisonment to protect the trees that her council wanted to cut down saw her gain um, re-election with huge local support. And I think four other Greens gained a seat through that action. Um, and the trees were saved too. Now this government is gifting us plenty of local issues to contend, such as objecting to new oil wells, waste incinerators, substandard buildings that they're trying to put on protected green sites, expanding airport runways and roads, legalizing bee killing pesticides, even a new coal mine. I mean, you can make this stuff up. And then there's HS2, which has seen four teenagers so afraid and so aware of the climate and ecological emergency that they've been willing and two still are risking their lives being tunneled under Euston Gardens currently to simply sound the alarm. We adults owe it to the kids to at least say it how it is to tell the people the truth whilst there's still a chance to make significant positive effective change. We need to at least be able to have a clear conscience when we look into our children's eyes and say that we honestly tried everything. Many of the youths, they know the scientific facts, but what is causing them the eco anxiety suffering is, is the inaction of this government and the, the fear of what will be, you know, suffering catastrophic climate impacts and ecological collapse. Today's youths, have sacrificed tremendously in the last 12 months to keep the older members of our families alive and it's time that we made equal sacrifices to keep them alive. And the Covid crisis has taught us the power of telling the truth, like as soon when people understood the causes and consequences they were willing to make tremendous sacrifices and it also taught us that this government is not going to save us. As um, co-founder Shara Ali says, we need to move beyond what is politically possible to deliver what is scientifically necessary. We need to empower and motivate people to consent and participate in making the necessary changes. We need to focus on what we're gonna gain, you know? We need to focus local, improving the quality of lives, creating happy, healthy, fulfilling, 
communities that our children can thrive in for generations to come. Yes, learning the truth is going to cause people shock, feelings of grief and anger, but they need to experience these emotions in order to consent to making the necessary changes. We need to transfer that emotional energy into positive action. And by including people in the decision-making processes, locally by using people and nationally by using citizens' assemblies, we can really help to get people to consent to these changes by being part of the process. And it will also strengthen politics, enabling those difficult decisions to be made without politicians having to shoulder any of the blame. It's perfect, really, isn't it? Let's start now, during lockdown, by doing three. Greta has shown the power of words, mobilizing millions of school children to strike for climate. We need to find our courage to step outside of our comfort zones and follow a radically honest path. Let's support Greens locally in actions. Let's tell the truth locally. Let's mobilize our communities to engage in emergency food growing, water capture, rewilding, mass plus, Get, getting together and creating energy, renewable energy co-ops, you know, make these changes that are necessary happen. Don't just wait for the government to deliver it to us. Um, and we need to get that energy and urgency that comes with XR and get it to, um, to sort of really and supercharge the transition movement to something that can create effective change. And let's plan the mother of all uprisings, once it's COVID safe to do so. Like, let's call upon the 50,000 members and all their cross-party friends, the sea of green hitting Westminster with our placards showcasing the solutions. Also a massive banner probably saying we are running out of time and that really powerful countdown clock of the carbon budget to the 1.5 degrees. Um, yeah. Let's booster this Green Britain revolution that's now launching through um, the, the Express and the Sun, because together we can. And I just really quickly like to say, I'm sorry, I know I'm running over. Um, a really huge thank you to those who have already expressed support for Greens Can, namely Molly Scott Cato, Sarah Lannan, Zoe Hatch, Jonathan Porrett, and Britta Goodman. Please do get involved. It's brand new. You can shape it and create it. We've got a couple of trainings coming up in People's Assembly Facilitation and MVDA. I'll put the details in the chat um, and helping with fundraising for actions. But also we're thinking that why not try and fundraise for resilience and regeneration of local, you know, local communities to get the money to make happen what we need to. Um, thanks very much.